So I suggest that we start with a, a quick definition of GovTech, uh, Clément, and the lessons from uh, the COVID crisis, maybe. Thank you very much, uh, Lucia. Um, GovTech is a contraction of government technology. And uh, to put it simply, I define it as um, the use and purchase of innovative technological solutions by state actors um, to carry out um, a, a defined policy. Um, and I will take two examples. For example, the French government is working with Doctolib, uh, that you may know, which is a, a French um, private company uh, working on, on scheduling uh, appointments during the vaccination campaign. And in the US, uh, during the crisis, the, the Trump administration asked Palantir Technology to build up the federal database uh, on uh, COVID cases. So basically, GovTech is when um, a private company is getting involved in a policy that in the past was designed and uh, executed by the state. And the origin of the idea, I think, can be traced back to the early 2000s when um, several international institutions such, such as the OECD, uh, the IMF, promoted the idea of e-government as a way to uh, improve the cost effectiveness of um, public services. And in, in the years 2010, you had a second wave with uh, the rise of civic tech, uh, which uh, tried to improve democratic processes through, uh, through technology. And if you look at the picture now, the, the, the GovTech market uh, today, um, which can be divided into, into several sectors, uh, such as um, health technology, uh, education technology, defense, security, and so on, the market is booming with a, um, a growth rate of 15% per year and a va an estimated value uh, in 2025 um, at 1 trillion, so it's massive. And in that sense, I think the COVID-19 crisis uh, has not been a, a game changer, it has been a catalyst of a previous uh, trend. And uh, I think that the trend will, will uh, go on, um, especially uh, in three sectors, um, health technologies, education, because during the, the COVID, during the pandemic, you had millions of students that had to go online to, to attend classes, and obviously smart cities. Um, I think there is one point um, where COVID, uh, the pandemic, has been a, a major game changer, that today, GovTech uh, is part of um, ideological and political narratives um, by uh, some countries. Uh, I think of China and in some ways Taiwan, Singapore, South Korea, because those countries um, they develop a narrative um, of their, around their, their handling of the crisis based on a massive use of new technologies, drones, facial recognition, and it has to do with the superiority of their political model. So I think the use of technologies by uh, state actors will become uh, a core aspect of the competition between political models uh, in the years to come. Thank you, Clément. And um, when it comes to smart city, I think we have a good example. Farouk, can you tell us uh, the rationale and the motivation of Politeia? Sure. Uh, it started with a personal experience, actually. So uh, I'm not a techie. I worked uh, in politics before I studied public policy and uh, I experienced basically myself uh, from the inside. You, you can have also more stories to tell probably or disagree with me. But it was frustrating actually to see how, how the data was used or actually not used in, in governments. Like you usually have hierarchical organizations and the reportings that are working, but usually data was not so much a role. The political narrative is important. Sometimes ideology is important and often leaders wanted data but didn't get it. And uh, the reason is because uh, government lacks digitization, actually collects a lot of data, but uh, doesn't bring it together. And this, this space I saw already when I was a policy advisor in a, one of the big governing parties in Germany. And then I, I left uh, and, and co-founded Politea and uh, we interviewed leaders and they all confirmed the problem. We have a lot of data, but we tap in the dark out of making use of it, out of it. And uh, we build products that actually do that. We integrate data from different sources and legacy systems, bring it together, visualize it, aggregate it, 
and show it to the leaders to make better decisions on local level about kindergarten, schools, public spaces, but also in the COVID pandemic, we did it for a whole state in Germany, monitoring the infectious diseases uh, on the ground in school system for a full state of 300,000 students. And that was my, my personal motivation. But if you would ask me uh, what I would derive from the experience I had, and I see it's, I think, a fundamental problem that we have, that government is lacking like 15 years uh, behind the private sector in digitization. And at the same time, at least in Germany, maybe this counts for France too, like 30% in Germany of the people that work in government, of all the public servants, are going to retire in the mm -hmm. next eight years. And we have climate change, and we have disasters happening, and we have uh, uh, the reorganization of our economy to green. Like This all needs to be done by, with less people. And so we need to digitize, and I think it's already uh, urgent to do that, yeah. Absolutely. So